Welcome to Home Renovision, the YouTube channel designed to help homeowners do DIY projects and get professional results. Today we are talking about staining doors. Now, the information we're giving out today is good for doors, handrails, any kind of wood component in your house, but specifically we're talking doors, and we'll go through all the details and tips and tricks and pitfalls that you want to watch out for. So today we're going to talk about staining a wood door and the information we're going to cover today covers for doors and handrails and spindles and rework. I'm going to give you all the information you need so that you can make the decision not just on the materials that you're staining but also on the products that you're going to use. We've got oil based, water based, different kinds of finishes. There's a lot of product on the market and so we're going to help you navigate which one is best for you. So today we're going to use a gel stain. It's easy to apply, doesn't make a lot of mess. So it's a great DIY stain. It also sets up in a couple of hours so that you can start the finish go process pretty much right away. And with any luck and good dry weather, it could be a one day project. All right, so here we are ready to do our door. Now it's a standard solid wood door. It's an inch and three eighths thick. So it can be used interior and you can replace an existing door. But like I said, we're using this in our shed. So make sure you check out that shed video at the end of this, there'll be a link. Before you get started though, you really want to make sure you've got everything you're going to need. I love these little blue towels, so this is the towel I use to apply my stain and to wipe it off. You're going to need some sandpaper just to make sure your doors are ready. Some Varsol because these are oil based products, okay, we didn't go with the water base on purpose because this is an exterior application. If you're doing interior, feel free to use the water base. But this is our gel stain and of course our steel wool which is really fine. This is a 4-0 steel wool. And this is used after we're done our finish just to help get all the little bumps out and just make it look perfect. It shines like glass. So I'm going to get all this out of the way real quick because we have to prep this area. And we'll go through all the stages just so that you can see how it's done. And then if you have any questions as you're watching this, you can ask them in the comment section below. And of course, I know it seems crazy in a world where everybody's trying to get money for doing nothing. We still answer all your questions every day. So when you get your door right from the factory, it's not ready to paint. And I know that might be, really, that's a bit of a surprise. But what it is, is it's a pretty smooth surface. But if you just go and feel it, you're going to find, first, it's dirty. Secondly, there's going to be areas of imperfection, okay? Little areas like this in the corner. Okay. And if you see nicks and scratches, little dents just from the shipping process, because it's solid wood, just sand them out. Make sure your surface is as nice as you can get it. And as a rule, of course I always try to sand with the grain to finish everything off. Now, if you have any holes, it'll be a great time to use a filler. But what I like to do is, is suggest that you take a look at your door before you take it back from the store. And if it's got that kind of damage, just get a different one. So once your door is sanded, you want to take a couple of these awesome blue towels. And the reason I like these is because of the value. When you go to the hardware store, they're trying to sell you towels to do stain work. $10 for three or four towels. It's a crazy waste of money. For $10, I got six rolls of these things that'll last me a year in my shop. Now, this is a little strong, Varsol. You can get just regular paint thinner. And the idea is just get a few drips on there. Here we go. And just give it a quick wipe, okay? And what we're doing here is just removing dust. This is not about wood conditioning. Um, this is a pine door. Generally speaking, I only use wood conditioner on my hardwoods. All right, they need a little bit more help to receive a stain. And that's where I'll use them. But on pine, I'm just using this to get rid of my, my dirt that's left on the surface. Once that's done, we're ready to stain. So once we got our surface prepped up and you've given it some time to dry, which is very important because you want to have this going on without the assistance of the varathane at different concentration levels here, thinning it out and getting different stains. So give it some time to dry. Uh, we're awesome here. We're out in a garage, nice breezy day. So we have some wind. This only took about 20 minutes to half an hour. Gloves, people. All right, oil stain, definitely gloves. 
There's a, a lesson I learned a while back. I didn't wear the gloves on a job site and I forgot that when I got home that night I was going out for a fancy dinner and I went out for a fancy dinner and my hands were all stained. Oh my goodness, I look like an idiot. Now I wear gloves because I don't try to pretend that I remember everything my wife's going to get me to do. Here we go. Just take your paint tool. This has to be opened up. Um, remember, oil-based products don't get shaken. They get stirred. Okay, so do not shake your oil. One of the best things about gel stain is it hardly has to be stirred at all. Now you'll see real quick here with the gel stain, there's not a lot of action going on there. There's no color changing, there's no nothing going on. Stirring this is almost a little bit redundant. All right, so the reason I use this is so I can throw it out. Just to demonstrate to you that there's not a whole lot going on there. Traditional liquid stains, totally different. If you don't stir it, you don't even have a stain. You're gonna have parts of the stain, but you're not gonna have a whole stain. Now, the reason I love this as a DIY, honestly, is because you don't have to be all that careful. You don't need a paintbrush. This is not Leonardo da Vinci time. You just wanna get this stuff on here. You wanna get it on liberally, okay? This is a rub on, let sit for two to five minutes, and then a wipe off. Go with the grain. You only wanna work with what you can comfortably reach because you, would, you don't wanna be reaching across this wet stain table and get covered on all your clothes. So I'm just gonna do up to the middle and I'm gonna do panels as much as I think I can do in about three or four minutes and then that'll be it. And then I'll stop and wipe it all off because it takes the same amount of time to wipe it on as it does to wipe it off. Now this stain is awesome. We uh, haven't seen a lot of gray stains on the market but because everything in our design palette nowadays seems to be gray, having a gray stain is a really great option. Now, of course, Verithane has two different grays on the market now, so you can go lighter or darker. This is actually their darker version. And I think I'm gonna run out of time, so I'm just gonna finish a couple of more cross members here and we'll do all the interiors later. Now you can see this does not take a great deal of skill. This is just about getting things covered in goop. <laughs> and that is really good enough. Now you can apply the stain in all kinds of directions if you have to fill gaps, but just finish wiping in the direction of the grain, okay? That's really the secret. And where you see the grain change with the panels, when you're all done, just make sure that everything is in the right direction. All right, so that has been two to five minutes. Now we're gonna stop adding the stain and we're gonna take it off. Remember, we don't wanna let it sit for too long or we lose our ability to manage our consistent color. All right, so we're just gently wiping what we've stained. Make sure we don't leave any big blobs on there, okay? If you do, wipe them out. And now we're doing, this is your quality control. All right, this is where doing it yourself is gonna pay dividends. Because nobody's gonna make it as nice as you will. It's your house and you're gonna know exactly what you care about. And you're gonna be able to take care of this to the whatever quality that you're gonna be happy with. If you're not happy with something, and if it's too dark, you can always put a little bit of Verithane on here and wipe it a little bit off, okay? Or if it's not dark enough, once you've gone through this process, you can always come back with more stain. I'd say give it about a half an hour and then try it again. But make sure the whole door is done first before you make that decision. You might be surprised and change your mind once you see the rest of the panels changed over. So now we got another couple minutes. We're gonna do all the inside on the one side of this door here. <laughs> And then when I'm done, I'll switch around and I'll work the rest of the door from the other side. <laughs> okay, so we've got this side all finished. The other four sides are all sealed as well, which is very important because this is gonna be an exterior door. All six sides of the door have gotta be stained and sealed so that it's waterproof. You don't wanna let moisture creep in and cause problems with your door. Now. Yeah, for the sake of time, I'm not going to let that completely dry. And the reason I'm not is because this is, after all, a shed door. And that was the inside of the shed door. 
and I don't have four days to mess around with oil to do a coat and let it dry, wait till the next day. So we are going to cheat and get right onto the second coat right away. And I just wanted to mention, make sure that the best side of the door is the one that's facing up. <laughs> it almost goes without saying, but you'd be surprised. Some of the comments I get, it's amazing. You know, there are people out there who want to do DIY projects with little or no experience. And hats off to you. I still think even if you're starting from that position, you're still the best person for the job. So some of the information I'm handing out seems a little bit obvious and redundant. Bear with me because we're trying to help a whole lot of people with a whole lot of different skill levels. And it's the same thing here, guys. We're just going to go along. We're going to put a nice, generous coating of this on. And whatever I can stain in three minutes is what I'm going to get done. And that is it. And we will come right back just like we did on the other side and clean it all off. Now, if you're wondering about using the acrylic products for interior doors, very much the same. The biggest difference and advantage, I would say, is that you can go with a really short drying time. Now, there are some finish applications in the polyurethanes that you can use on a door in the oil that have got quick dry time as well. I always found that the faster something dries, the, the shorter it stays performing well. And I guess that's, is that proper English? The more you cheat so that you can make something move along quick, the more it costs you, both in the product that you're purchasing and in the performance. I think that's just a, a basic rule. So if you want to get something that's going to perform well, especially for exterior, get something that's going to take the whole 12 hours like a normal oil to dry. Don't be in a hurry to get something done just so that you have to go ahead and do it again in a few years later. All right, so our door is completely stained, all six sides. Now, this is the biggest warning I've got for you. Be patient, all right? Let the darn thing dry. The number one cause of wrecking a stain project is moving along too fast. This is the part where we just close the door, we walk away, we let it do what it does. I know it's a penetrating gel stain, and after three, four, five, six hours, you could come out here and it's gonna feel dry, but what's gonna inevitably happen is you're gonna grab that door, flip it over, and you're gonna leave your fingerprints on it. <laughs> you're gonna wipe that stain right out of that door where you grabbed it, and then you're right back to the beginning of sanding it down and staining again, and then adding another 12 hours of dry time to your project. So just let it go, come back the next day, put a finish coat on, again, let that one dry overnight, then flip the door. This is a three day project when you're dealing with oil. Necessary if you're putting it outside. If it's an interior job, you can do two coats of stain, two coats of finish, all in the same day. But if it's an exterior job, don't even try to cut corners. Stick with the results that will last. Go with the 12 hour dry time product and just be patient. All right, so we're gonna let this dry. We'll close the door. We'll come back tomorrow and finish this bad boy off. Well. It is the next morning now, and we are looking at a door that's been sitting here, I guess it's about 18 hours. So we're kind of in the middle of the range for oil-based products from 12 to 24. Um, this time of year, it was a little cool last night, but not too humid, so it's dry, but a little tacky. Remember, this is a penetrating stain. So because it's a little tacky, I'm just gonna give it a quick rub and just pick up anything from the surface here that's left over. See, there's going to be a little bit of res residue sitting on the top in areas where the stain was applied thicker, just because we haven't waited quite as long as necessary for our current conditions. And that's fine. That's not going to hurt anything. Oh, yeah. Not a big deal. Okay. Now, the finish that I'm using here is Verithane Diamond Finish. It's an oil-based product as well. It's good to match oil with oil. <laughs> now this is um, designed for exterior, so it's gonna have some UV protection. And of course, now I'm just gonna pull this out. You can see the honey-like sludge in the bottom. And this is why they say you need to stir this. Of course, there is one rule of thumb. You never shake an oil base. You can shake um, acrylics and latex, but you can't shake an oil. You'll actually put so many air bubbles in that product 
that'll render it useless. You won't be able to apply it. It'll just dry with all these pits everywhere and you have to sand it all back when you're finished. And so you stir until the honey-like substance is gone. And you don't go vigorously here. You can also whip the air into that if you stir too quickly. So you take your time. It's one of these places where patience is a virtue. There we go. Now that is perfect. One of the things you don't want to have happen is you don't want to have drips on your door. So if I start working over here and I get a drip, it's going to cause me a problem down the road. Okay? So that's why I'm working on a cloth. Now this is really interesting. This is a throwaway brush. Okay, it's just a cheap one. I hate washing oil products. So what I do is I'll just take the brush like this and I'll run and fan a few times and then lift it up. And if you see any hair sticking out, you can get rid of them now so that they're not going to sit in your finish while you're applying it. Okay? That'll help you out. Now generally, the hairs are going to come out of the brush. So pay attention when it happens. Have your gloves on your hand and just pull it out right away. Now, oil is interesting. You don't have to load the brush like you do with latex. Okay? You want to just wipe off the excess. We're going to demonstrate how to do this right here. You want to just gentle and you want to just stretch it. Careful to watch your drips and you pull it across the surface, okay, without trying to squeeze it out. And the reason you do this is so that you have control. All right? This is like sweeping a kitchen floor. You're not sweeping like this, okay? What you'll end up doing is you'll end up rubbing the stain like I just did there in the demonstration. That's just great. Now, this is the back side of the door, so it's not an issue. Okay, nice and gentle. And that way you'll apply this finish to the surface and you aren't going to change the overall appearance. Okay, now in these grooves, try to keep your brush under control, so you're doing just the groove. Again, you don't want to manipulate the finished stain work. You're going to notice that when you don't leave it sit as long as you should, <laughs> it will pick excess stain up off the surface and mix it in with the finish. And it'll kind of tint. So when you're done with this kind of a product, it's a one and done. You don't want to save this for the next project because you're going to have little bits of that gray rub, rub stain sitting in the, uh, the finished product in the can afterwards. Okay. Now I'm just being very systematic here in my approach. Working kind of clockwise. Now, I'm using this product because I really like the Verathane products. I've got a fair amount of experience with it over the years. This is a product that's been around a long time, something that my grandfather has actually been using and turned me on to. But if you have an experience with a different finish, oil-based or shellac, or, then put it in the comment section below. I'd love to get your take on this. I like to see what other people are using, give it a try on one of my products, the next projects the next time always down for learning a new trick. And the reason this is a great DIY project is because it doesn't really matter how perfect you are with this. This is all about patience and just keep running it until everything is covered. All right, so the process is really quite simple. Just make sure that you're watching your drips. So I like to, you know, when I'm Fill in my brush. I don't just drop it in here and squeeze and pull. Right? I'll drop a little bit there, throw a little bit there, around the side, and then I'll spend some time and pull it around the corners. All right? Oil is amazing because it covers such a huge space with just a little bit. If you're just a little bit patient, you'll be able to take a little bit and stretch a long way. So manage your drips. Pick them up as you go and you'll have no problem with this. The biggest difference between this and latex paint and latex finishes or acrylic finishes is in its ability to cover a huge space with just a little bit. Don't underestimate it. 
that looks dry, but we'll just pull this a few times and you'll see. It'll take care of that whole space with plenty of leftover. And when you're coming by these joints in the natural wood, take your time to set your brush where the joint starts and pull and really establish that line. You want to make sure that the grain of the way your brush is going is following all those wood joints. That'll give you a really nice finish. And one little tip so that you can do the side. Take your brush after you've dipped it, paint an area until you think the brush is relatively dry. Then come back and do the sides. There'll be enough oil left in that brush to brush the side and just keep stretching it until it stops working. And that way you can finish the side without drips. Perfect. Now real quick, one more thing. If you come here for information on how to do woodworking finishing inside your house, one more coat or application you have is after this is all dry, you can come by with your steel wool. I like to use the 3-0 or the 4-0. And that'll make a lot more sense when you're in the store shopping for it. It's usually in the paint department. You can ask for help, but this is used in order to buff an oil-based finish. And what this does is it gives an oil-based finish a glass-like look, okay? Now the finish might be satin or semi-gloss, but this will make it incredibly smooth. Also very easy to clean after that. So if one coat, you're not happy with the, the consistency of the finish, you can always do a second application. I would suggest sanding with the steel wool first, Wipe it down with a, a cloth with a little bit of varathane on it and then do another application. But when you're done, always use your steel wool. This is more of a polisher than a sanding process. So you can polish your finished door with this and then you're going to love your finished look. All right, so here's a pro tip for you when you're using your brush with oil-based products. You don't want to wash this out. And yet we are sitting here with a situation where we have to do one side, let it dry for a day, flip it over, do that one, let that dry for a day possibly another coat on each side. That can be four days in this brush. Now, if you don't take care of it, it's gonna be four times you gotta buy a brush. Here's a secret to take care of that problem. That's why you like nitrile gloves. Grab your brush, take your gloves off when you're done. Okay, hold them there. Take off your glove. And your glove can become the container for your brush. Now you can just set this down knowing that there's no air getting to the brush and it's going to be in perfect shape for you tomorrow. I'm just going to finish taking care of putting the, my, my finish on this door and we're pretty much done so thanks for joining us. If you like this kind of content then feel free to subscribe. Don't forget to hit the little bell button next to the subscribe button because that way you'll get notifications every time we put up a new video. And if you'd like to see the project that this door is being prepped for, it's actually for our outdoor shed project, then uh, you can just follow the link in the description at the end of this video. Thanks again. See you next time.